Welcome to another episode of Task Human Talks. I'm your host, Jamie Carroll, a fellow wellness provider on the Task Human app as well. And today we have one of our coaches, Emily Kulis. She is based out of Europe. She's in Poland. You are a health coach and a yoga instructor. Emily, I'm so excited to have you. Welcome to Task Human Talks. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. Yeah. So how are you helping people on the Task Human app? What kind of things are you helping them with? So I'm helping clients on the Task Human app. I'm helping them identify what they need to do or what steps they need to take to achieve the changes that they want to make. Mm. So I offer yoga instruction, meditation, relaxation, Um, breathing techniques. I love that. Yeah. We're going to dive into all of this today. Um, So make sure you guys stay tuned for all of this. This is going to be a really, really amazing talk. Um, We'll finish with some breath work at the end too, I think. But I know as a health coach, you're also helping people with weight management. Um, What what are some things that we should know when it comes to weight loss? I feel like now I'm hearing a lot and I know I work with some clients that are struggling with I guess people are calling it the like quarantine 15 or something. Like that. <laughs> I haven't heard that one yet. Um, <laughs> it hasn't made its way over to where you are. <laughs> but yeah, so a lot of people are dealing with, you know, excess weight being put on, you know, probably from being at home a lot. So what do we need to know when it comes to weight loss? One step at a time. I I feel like people get really overwhelmed and they say, okay, next week I'm starting a new diet and I'm working out every day and, 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 Um, and that's not really setting yourself up for success. So I think it's really important to just take it easy, take it slow and do it one step at a time so that it's more sustainable. Is that how you're helping your clients? Like just ma- just taking those small baby steps and helping them uncover what those steps are going to be for their situation? Yeah, yeah. I love that. What about foods? Like how are you helping them with foods when it comes to weight loss? So I'm a really big advocate of eating as many unprocessed foods as possible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, as many, you know, whole unprocessed foods. So no grains, as many veggies as humanly possible, <laughs> yeah. and really a variety. So not just getting stuck on on one thing that can also get boring, and then it's easy to fall into, you know, junk food or or cravings. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So a variety of whole, unprocessed foods, lots of vegetables, of course, as well. Um, mm-hmm. I know you also mentioned on your website, you work, that you work with people who want to gain weight as well. Why would someone be in that situation where they want to gain weight? Um, There are various situations where some people have trouble gaining weight um, or let's say their hormones aren't working as well as they can be. So if someone is underweight, let's say they just don't have an appetite or maybe they do a lot of cardio just naturally yeah, um, and they just can't put on the weight. There are people like this and I feel like they kind of get forgotten in this health and wellness industry. Um, But yeah, when you're underweight, a lot of very negative things can happen with your health. And one of them is uh, hormones just stop working the way they should. And hormones are really regulating everything that's happening in the body. So that can really help them by gaining weight. Okay. Got it. So would you say that like hormones matter more than like food or fitness or is it kind of a balance of all? Well, hormones are kind of um, like a gateway. I would say Uh, if they're working well, then, you know, focus on, on your fitness on your, on your food and and you're golden right yeah Uh, if your hormones aren't working well if something's off or unbalanced then you kind of have to solve that problem first and uh, take a holistic view right we can't we can't forget about them (laughs) yeah absolutely okay fascinating do you have any success stories that 
you know, when it comes to a weight loss client or, or how you help someone with hormones or like any success stories? Yeah. Um, I do have a client in my weight management program. She's lost approximately 15 kilos so far. Um, okay. And the best part is that she's keeping it off and it's not an issue, you know, no yeah. yo-yo dieting and no extreme restrictions. So it's a very, a very sustainable and safe way to lose weight. I love that. So it's more about like, even with food, it's about that lifestyle, not a yeah. yo-yo diet. Why do diets not work? I think they are too far away from our lifestyle. Like we try to yeah. do something different, which mm -hmm. I understand why, you know, like we, we say, okay, this isn't working. So let's try the opposite. Yeah. <laughs> and we think, okay, this diet is the opposite of what I usually do. So it's going to work. <laughs> yeah. But because it's so different and it doesn't fit our lifestyle or the, the food culture that we grew up in and the tastes that we enjoy, it, it eventually fails because it's not immersed in our own habits and lifestyle that we need. Yeah, absolutely. And we need to be able to enjoy life as well. I think. Absolutely. Not <laughs> deprive ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> not constantly yes. deprive ourselves. Um, but that kind of brings me to the next topic that I wanted to dive into, which was balance. Does balance really exist? You know, like I feel like a lot of people are like, oh, let's find balance in our lives or they're looking for balance. Um, you know, how does that work? Is there such a thing? Yes. <laughs> a short, a short answer is yes. So uh, how um, can we get balance in our lives? So our bodies naturally want to be in balance. Uh, in, in biological terms, it's homeostasis. It's probably a word that we've all learned in our biology yeah. lessons in, in high school. Um, Sounds familiar. Our bodies, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So our bodies want to be balanced. They want to be in this neutral state. Um, when it comes to these more conscious decisions that we're making on a day-to-day -day basis, um, I think it's really important to create your baseline, right? Create your neutral. What is your neutral? Because you will always come back to that. So I'm not sure if I can think of an example off the top of my head, but let's say that um, you spend all day working from home, nine to five, and then you cook at home and you wash something and then you go to sleep. And that's your neutral, right? That is your balance. But you can adjust it and you can create a new baseline behavior for yourself that says every morning I'm going to go I'm going to go for a walk or every Sunday I'm going to meal plan my meals and okay you start to create your new balance of what's happening in your life so the baseline um and what our neutral is it sounds like is just what we are already doing yeah it's what we come back to when we're not thinking okay And so in order to begin to create balance, it's about inviting in new ways of doing something or adding something in that's like a, a slow new habit? Yeah, it's the habits. It's okay. the habits. So you create new habits. And once those are you know fully integrated into your life, like brushing your teeth twice a day, that's so obvious for most of us. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We don't even think about so, it. Yeah. And that including more self-care habits, you know, okay. throughout the week or throughout the day, slowly changes that baseline behavior of what you're going to do on a daily basis. Okay. I love that. Um, and how can we stay, what are ways to stay centered and focused when we're creating these new habits? I think writing it down is awesome. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Um, when you see something in front of you every day and you see it in your own words, your own handwriting, and you know, this is your own commitment to yourself. I think also knowing the why behind the habit change is not, it's not optional, right? We need to know the why because that's going to help us on the days when 
you know, we just don't feel like it, or I'm going to not do that. Just, you know, the days where we feel a little more lazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, knowing the why behind it can really motivate us. Okay. Well, we have days though, where like, or weeks even, or months where we may find that the balance can't be balanced. Like maybe we've got a big work project coming up. And so we only have to focus on work, you know, like what do we do in those moments and those months or weeks, or even a day where we feel just so overwhelmed in one thing that we just absolutely have to get done. Like, how can we still cultivate balance in those times, I guess is. I don't know if that makes sense. In those situations, um, it's really about prioritizing. Okay. So if you know that. that, for example, one thing, you know, that really helps me, for example, if I'm in this crazy work experience for a couple of weeks, mm -hmm. then I know that I need to have a long time to myself for like at least 30 minutes a day. Like nobody talked to me, okay. nobody, nobody tried to call me. I'm not, I just need to be alone because I know that for me, that's what helps me re recharge and okay. properly take care of myself. Yeah. So once someone knows what that is for them, then they can use that just one habit or one activity during that, that uh, really intense period of their life okay. to you know, take care of themselves, even when they're in that moment. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Cause I keep thinking with balance that like, I don't know, like some things it's priorities. That's exactly what it is. Like we have to prioritize during those times when something is coming up a wedding, uh, a work project, you know, like something yes. like that. So that makes mm -hmm. a lot of sense. But one thing you talk about as well is relationships and cultivating relationships and how right now with everything going on, it can be hard to cultivate relationships either with others. And we may find a disconnect with ourselves. So what are some ways that we can cultivate deeper relationships with others and with ourselves? So with ourselves, put down the phone. Yeah. <laughs> I know people won't want to hear that. <laughs> But when we stop consuming everything from the outside, that's when we learn what we need from the inside. Mm. Uh, so, so we have a moment, you know, let yourself be bored. Let yourself feel boredom and your body and your mind will tell you what you need and what you want. And that's another way to get to know yourself, right? You just need that silence to hear it. <laughs> Yeah. It's like cultivating space for yourself. Exactly. Cultivating yeah. more, more space. I love that. Mm -hmm. What did you say? You said when we stop consuming from the outside, I, I couldn't write it down fast enough. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I'll think about it. It was organic. It wasn't yeah. <laughs> I love, I loved that though. When we stop consuming from the outside, whatever you said, I got to go back and listen, but I'm really <laughs> profound. Um, and I love that you said cultivating relationships with ourselves, put the phone down. Cause most times we don't think about that unless it's somebody else that we're around mm -hmm. and we're like, Oh, put the phone down because you're with other people. Mm -hmm. So I love that shift of putting it down, even when it's just for ourselves and doing yeah. that for us. Cause mm -hmm. I, I think that we can forget that we're just as important as other people and we should pay attention to ourselves. We are. <laughs> yes. You, you yourself, you are the most important person in yeah. life. So it's really important. And what about, uh, building those relationships with others? Yeah. So in this case, you know, in our current situation, you know, a lot of us are still quarantined or we can't travel or meet with people mm -hmm. um I personally have a lot of friends abroad so I can't say put down the phone <laughs> because <laughs> because I need the phone <laughs> that's um, true <laughs> but, <laughs> um I think finding new fun ways to communicate online is so honestly it's just really fun and it's also a great way to keep each other engaged. 
So sometimes when I'm on the phone, I'm, you know, I'm starting to, to drift off, you know, I'm not paying attention anymore, which is not okay. Like, I don't, I don't want to do that. Yeah. Um, But, you know, try something new, play a, a live game online at the same time or cook together over FaceTime. I did that for the first time with my friend last weekend and it was so fun. Oh, that's a great so, idea. Yeah, just try trying new things even though we are in this strange situation that we're in. <laughs> okay, so maybe play a game online, um, cook together over FaceTime, anything else? Mm-hmm. You can even do workouts together, you know, yeah. like on FaceTime. Why not like challenge each other? Okay. You do 10 pushups. No, you do 50 sit-ups or whatever you're doing. Right? Yeah. I love this. So now it sounds like with COVID going on and the way the world is now's the time to put the phone down, put the technology down for ourselves, but then maybe pick it back up in a creative way when we're trying to connect with others. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Awesome. Um, And you also have a lifestyle. So you talk about a lifestyle program that you have as well, which I think is fascinating. And so what are ways that we can spruce up our work and our home spaces right now? Everything, I I feel like everything is the same. You know, we're working from home, we're working out at home, we're cooking at home, you know, we're just at home. (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, how can we like make things different or spruce things up or tap into that creativity yeah I think it's a matter of addition and subtraction Mm -hmm. so more greenery you know yeah more plants (laughs) I know I'm looking at yours I love it (laughs) (laughs) um you know add, add more life around you you know if we are stuck at home and if it is winter where we are and you know there is no greenery add more life around you yeah. Um, maybe start growing herbs in your kitchen or adopt a hamster or uh, adopt a dog. You know, there are ways of bringing more life in mm. and then also reducing clutter, you know, getting rid of things that don't, in Marie Kondo's words, bring us joy or spark joy. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's also important because then we're making space for more, more of that life, that life-filled objects, I guess you can say. And that's a good way, too, for people to, to be creative in these times. Something I hear mm-hmm. a lot from people, friends, clients, you know, everyone's like, well, I can't get creative. We're in a pandemic. They're, you know, they're, they feel constricted by that mm-hmm. in some way. So. Yeah taking control and using your creativity in the space that you have that you're in exactly exactly you know even rearrange your furniture why not yeah switch rooms in your house why not (laughs) do something fun and new and yeah just just try one thing that I do too is because I've got a lot of okay I I cannot keep a plant alive so I do have a lot of (laughs) plants in my house but what I'll do is I'll I'll rearrange those like some that are in the tv room I'll put them in the living room or move them into the kitchen and then move others out and put them in the bedroom and then Mm -hmm. yeah so like rearranging and getting creative that way exactly I love it okay so we've talked about you know weight loss we've we've touched a little bit on food and um, just lifestyle and our homes you were also a yoga instructor. So I want to make sure we touch on this too. One of the questions I have is, is yoga for everyone? Is yoga for everyone? Absolutely. 100%. 200% yes. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I know that right now we're kind of bombarded with this very narrow idea of what yoga is. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, that it's mostly practiced by able-bodied, thin, Caucasian, hypermobile people. Yeah. Um, Which is a category that I myself fall into. Mm -hmm. And so it is hard sometimes to explain to people, you know, yoga is for everyone, for every race, whether you're uh, not able-bodied or, you know, there's I get really passionate about this because I really want people to understand that 
yoga is not exclusive in an, in any way. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you don't have to do tree pose. You don't have to do triangle pose. You don't have to stand on your head. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to do that to do yoga. You can, you can, you know, take five minutes to meditate or take two minutes to breathe. And that is already doing yoga, right? That's amazing. What type of, is there a type of yoga that you teach specifically that you, that you do with your clients? I like to borrow from, from a few different schools of yoga. I think there's a lot of wisdom in in each of them. Right. So I use a lot of, uh, I basically do a blend of Iyengar techniques with vinyasa. I like some structure and I like some flow. And I also really love uh, yoga, yoga nidra. So the, the really deep relaxation. Where's the best place for, for someone who's brand new, never done yoga? Where do they start with the, with the breath? Like, I actually, easy? so there are some breathing techniques that um, are accessible and relatively easy for anyone to do. But I actually think that asana or the yoga poses are the best way to start because you're preparing the body for the breath. Um, in the eight lines of yoga, breathing comes after the movement yeah. aspect of things. So, yeah, I can talk for hours on this topic. <laughs> oh, I love it. No, I think it's great. There's a lot of people out there who are intimidated by the idea of slowing down and doing yoga. Um, what what tips do you have for those people? I don't know if you encounter that, but like I'll encounter that a lot where you know, I, I feel like in society these days, it's, you know, go, go, go more, more, more do, do, do. And so the idea of like being in a pose and taking breaths almost can feel like counterproductive to what we've learned in the world is like, we better be doing something. You know what I mean? Get off your butt. Why are you just sitting there? <laughs> yes. Yes. I know the feeling yeah. I to be that person. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> um, so what I would say to someone who feels this way is rest is productive. Mm. And slowing down is productive. Not that we need to be productive all the time. That's a story for another conversation. <laughs> but, you know, if someone's feeling overwhelmed, like they can't rest uh, or they shouldn't rest or slow down, you know, start small, start with one breath, you know, just take one deep breath when you're commuting to work or when you're washing your hands or, you know, anything that you do on a daily basis, start really small, do two minutes of visualizing yourself laying down on the beach. Yeah. Okay. You did, you did something, right? Right. And it's really productive for us to slow down, tap into the parasympathetic nervous system so that our bodies, you know, so they work properly. They work the, the way that we want them to work. I love that. And you also talked a little bit on your blog I saw about chakras. Are you using the chakras in your yoga practice? Is that... Yeah, so I don't really include it on any yoga class. Mm-hmm. Um, the, I think the, the chakras are a really great, um, sorry, a really great way to categorize our lives. I think humans love categorizing. Yeah. You know, we, we love having boxes to put things in. I was going to say that. <laughs> but before we dive into that, what are the chakras for people that are listening and don't know? Okay. Yeah. That's a great question. So chakras are these energy centers in our bodies. Uh, There has been some scientific evidence that they're actually where nerve bundles are located in our body. Mm. Um, But in um, ancient Vedic tradition or yoga or, you know, 
basically anything coming from India, ancient India. <laughs> you have the mention of these chakras and these energy vortexes, okay. I might say. And so they're located throughout the body and there's um, some disagreement on how many there are. Some okay. people say there, there are you know thousands and thousands of them, but there are seven main chakras that most, most people in this world will will know of yeah right so i don't know do we want to go further into this do we have time <laughs> <laughs> well i think i'm curious about how you are um how you said that you were using them to create that like structure um yeah, yeah it's more about how you're using them in your practice i guess yeah. So for example, I mean, I can use myself as an example. Why not? Yeah. So um, for many years, I had an issue with my throat chakra. I would get strep throat all the time, bronchitis all the time. I was losing my voice multiple times and it was, you know, really a struggle. And I knew something is going on in here, you know, yeah. what's going on? And uh, when you have trouble communicating or you have um, issues that are showing up in the organs around the chakra or uh, the area around the chakra, then it can be underactive, it can be overactive, yeah. or it can be blocked. So what we are aiming for, <clears throat> excuse me, there it is, there's the throat chakra, <laughs> uh, is that we want it to be harmonized, right? We want yeah. it to be, to be spinning, right? The chakra okay. spin. And what I did is I followed all of the advice on how to heal, harmonize, unblock the throat chakra. So this would be different if my throat chakra was overactive. Yeah. Uh, but for myself personally, I drink a lot of herbal tea okay. uh, to, to warm and soften everything here. Treat it well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, gentle neck stretches, uh, okay. doing, a, doing certain yoga poses that really open up the throat. So all of those things. And also, you know, off, off the yoga mat, practicing communicating how I feel and speaking my truth mm -hmm. that's what really started to harmonize my throat chakra and so now I feel like it's in a good space it's it's properly you know spinning yeah and so there are yoga poses that can coincide with each chakra as well yeah that you can do okay yeah awesome I love that Anything else you want to share on the chakras or any other way that you're using them that you think would benefit people? Oh, I don't, I just love chanting. So, um, something I recently learned, you know, always learning in this field. It's yeah. Ending. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> so the, the vagus nerve is actually stimulated by humming, chanting, singing. Okay. Right. And chanting or you know, any of the three, I think are amazing. But if you're meditating, you can include chanting that is specific to each chakra, which I love. Each chakra has a seed sound of Ija. So you can use that in your meditation practice. And I love that. Incorporate it. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Okay, cool. Maybe we can learn some of those. I want to, I want to, have you share with us some breath work in just a little bit, but um, I kind of want to keep talking about yoga. I know you used to teach at um, out in Malaysia at a club med. What was that experience like? Um, <laughs> it was chaotic. Was it? <laughs> yes, it was amazing. Um, I learned so, so much, yeah. you know, being immersed in multiple different cultures and uh, in a part of the world where I, I never lived before. Yeah. Yeah. Specifically for yoga, it was quite a challenge because uh, most yoga teachers kind of, for lack of a better term, they, they gain a following. 
Mm -hmm. um, so you usually have the same students come into your class because the students like your style of teaching and they, they resonate with that. So they want to keep coming. When I was teaching in Club Med, it's, it's a resort. So the guests rotate every right. few days or every week or every couple of weeks. So it's really having fresh eyes every time I come into a class and saying, okay, you know, I need to consider all of these people. Mm -hmm. I don't know their backgrounds. Right. <laughs> I don't know whether, you know, what kind of yoga they practice or if, if they have injuries, will they share that information with me? So kind of, it's tough, but it is, it's a nice challenge, you know, kind of having those fresh eyes every single time. You said that uh, you learned a lot. What was the biggest lesson? I don't know if you want to call it that, but what would, what's the biggest lesson that you learned during that time? What we consider spicy is not spicy. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's hard, <laughs> all jokes aside, it's, it's really hard to pick one thing, but yeah. something that had a really huge impact on me was how a lot of people that grew up in a East or Southeastern Asian culture, they have this idea of foods that are warming to the body and foods that are cooling to the body and when we should not eat those foods or eat those foods okay. and uh whereas you know in in western society i feel like we're focused on you know okay what are the macros how many yeah. calories uh what are the vitamins and minerals in this food but they're focused on you know like what's the overall effect yeah. on your well-being from eating this yeah, which I thought was so interesting. That is. So when, can you go like dive into that a little bit more? Cause that's kind of like the Ayurvedic principles. Is that right? Yeah. I'm not yeah, familiar was, with that. So, so I wish I actually learned more about this, but it was, it's one of those things that's so ingrained in your culture yeah. that you just, you, you don't really pay attention to it. Like it's something that's so obvious to you that, you know, they couldn't explain it to me, but they said, you know, don't eat dragon fruit during this time or, or something like that. And okay. Got I would it. say, you know, wait, what, why, <laughs> wait, what, what's going on here? <laughs> you know, something wow. to, to look into for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. And so uh, you as a coach, what's your self-care routine like? So I already mentioned that I need my alone time, I yeah. need my quiet time. <laughs> um, personally, I try to get some kind of movement in every day. Yeah, uh, It's really important to me. It really helps me feel good in my body, you know, less aches and pains. If I take a longer walk, do some stretching, you know, or, you know, a more, or a more intense yoga practice, whatever it is, uh, even if it's just a little bit. It's there. Yeah. And the other thing is drinking lots of water. So currently in the winter, I drink a lot of tea. Yeah. <laughs> um, in the summer, it's more just plain water, but okay. that also really helps me just overall feel so much better. I love it. Movement and water. Okay. Well, before we wrap it up, I do want to talk about and learn with you some breath work or meditation or something that you want to share with everybody. So why don't you go for it? <laughs> okay. So important in breath work is sitting up tall. So okay. sure your spine is nice and straight. I was not sitting tall, so that's on me. <laughs> <laughs> um, this breath is Chandra Vedana, and it's uh, a nostril technique. So basically what we're going to do is inhale through the left nostril okay. and then exhale through the right. And we're going to be using our, our fingers to help us out here. So what you can do is place your index finger and middle finger mm -hmm. on your forehead where the third eye chakra is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we'll place the right thumb over the right nostril. And feel free to close your eyes. 
I'm sorry, we didn't take a deep breath. So let's release the fingers. <laughs> take a deep breath in. Exhale everything out. Then we'll close the right nostril. And on the next inhale, inhale through the left. Switch the fingers and exhale through the right. Switch the fingers again, inhale through the left. Close the left, exhale right. Let's do that one more time, inhale left. And exhale right. And you can release your fingers. Open your eyes whenever you're ready. Just notice how you're feeling. The Chandra Vedana uh, breathing technique is a uh, moon piercing. So it's a cooling breath to the body. Uh, we're inhaling the, the coolness, right? If okay. we switched sides, we would be inhaling the warmth, the sun. So you're inhaling the coolness through your left nostril. Yes. Yeah. It's really great so, when you're feeling overheated. <laughs> yeah. I was just going to ask a little bit more about that. So when we're inhaling the cooling, like why would, what are the benefits of inhaling the cooling besides like if we are feeling overheated, um, mm -hmm. like so, what internal benefits? Overheated can be emotionally or physically or mentally. So okay. we feel like we have a lot of thoughts happening or maybe we're feeling really frustrated uh, or you can't sleep. You just want to quiet the mind a little bit. You can okay. try the, the moon piercing breath. And then in the other aspect of it, if we were inhaling the right, more of the warming, when are some times that we would want to use that breath? So you can use that in the morning to help yourself wake up. I love it. Okay. Uh, maybe when you're feeling a little, a little sleepy, but you don't have the chance to nap or do uh, a nidra practice. So uh, anytime you just need a little bit of an up and a little bit of warmth. Need an up. Okay. I love it. Great. Thank you for sharing that with us. Happy to. Yeah. So before we wrap up, is there anything else that you want to share about your coaching, about what you do? or anything with us? I guess I just want people to know that, you know, we're here to help. You know, yeah. there are, whatever you're trying to do, there's someone out there that can help you do it. Mm -hmm. So it's okay to reach out and, and just get started. I love it. And you're doing breath work too with people, breath work and meditation on the Task Human app as well. Yeah. Awesome. Beautiful. So for all of you out there, you know, if you're looking for yoga, for some movement, for some breath work, meditation, to learn a little bit more about habit change or your own health, make sure you reach out to Emily on our Task Human app. Thank you so much for joining me today in this Task Human talk. It was lovely to have you on here. Thank you so much, Jamie. Yeah. And I'll see you guys all next time. <laughs>